There's many misconceptions when it comes to traction products on your sled and what they are and are not doing. Today I hope to clear the air of some of these myths and get you pointed in the right direction. Sites such as the Woody's Online Application Guide is a great place to get you started. Right up front we need to know that there are a lot of preconceived ideas about carbide runners and studs and many of them are just plain old wrong. The days of 300 studs in our tracks and 20 inches of carbide runner are gone. And thanks to innovative and greater understanding of a snowmobile's dynamics, we're able to not only improve the performance of a snowmobile, but more importantly, and more front and center, increase the safety. And that is truly where the carbide hits the ice. I'll go into greater detail about both studs and carbide runners, but for this week, I'm gonna stick to just carbides. Many people believe that the greater the length of the carbide insert on your runner, the better the steering. But after talking with the folks at Woody's, they're plain old wrong. Woody's offers many different styles of carbide runners, and one of the most interesting differences between them is not the amount of carbide inserted into the host bar, but the shape and diameter of the host bar itself. Woody's offers the host bar in multiple different profiles, and they opened our eyes to one of the hallmark truths about your ski's runner, that the host bar does 90% of the steering work, not the carbide. In hard-packed, non-ice trail conditions, a standard hard-weld host bar without carbide would actually do an excellent job steering your snowmobile. The rounded profile is less aggressive and will turn much smoother, however can get sucked into other tracks and may cause some level of tracking or darting. The Ace Carbide Runner offers a narrow, flat-sided host bar that cuts its own groove and causes the ski to have a more aggressive keel. Woody's offers multiple options for host bar diameter as well as host bar profile, but possibly one of the more popular options of the past five years is the Dooley and the Slim Jim. These twin profile runners go a long ways in changing the steering dynamics of your sled. Keep in mind that the host bar is doing most of the steering work, but now we have two profiles instead of just one on a single runner. But also keep in mind that with these two profiles, you have two per ski for a grand total of four, which is displacing your weight over a much greater area. Because of this displacement, the dually featuring dual round host bars became increasingly popular with touring riders on four-stroke snowmobiles. With the front end weight increased, the dual pattern along with the larger contact area meant riders would experience easier steering effort and reduced darting. However, the lower pressure on each host bar also caused some pushing in corners when the aggressive rider was pushing the snowmobile harder and higher ground speed. To solve this problem, the Slim Jim Dooley Carbide Runner was designed. It uses a square profile host bar that cuts down and pierces through the snow and hooks up much better at higher speed. The Slim Jim provides aggressive riders with the front end precision that they desire at high speeds. However, because they cut through the snow, they do wear out quicker. With the changes in ski profiles since the days of tringling arms and skis that were way out in front of a snowmobile's mass, manufacturers have also changed the design of ski and increased the rocker, while shortening up the keel to try to keep the steering from feeling too heavy. On some ski profiles, like the Pilot Ski from Skidoo, Woody's found that the front of the carbide host bar would actually wear clean through because the front end pressure being put on the skis. To combat this, the Navigator Ski Protector was designed and is now offered for multiple applications. This unique design actually packs the snow ahead of the runner itself, creating a fresh surface for the carbide to cut its own path. It also lifts the front of the ski on top of the snow to help with premature front ski and host bar wear. Now we can't go without talking about the carbide insert itself, because while the host bar does do a lot of the steering work, the reality is the carbide's there for more than just protecting the host bar from prematurely wearing out. And surprisingly, that is one of the design elements of the carbide. But when you get off the fresh groomed snow and into an icy corner, hard pavement, or frozen lakes, the carbide does play a bigger role. This is the 10% of the time when having a carbide is imperative to keeping you safe and your riding experience enjoyable. Because our industry is primarily studying just the center of the track and not the outside cleats, we can now get away with much less carbide because snowmobiles don't push as they did when studded across the entire track surface. If you want your sled to feel like it's locked on rails, you're going to be the person who still enjoys an 8-inch insert per ski. However, because of the rocker, most times only 30% of that carbide will actually be contacting the trail. The average rider still finds 4 or 6 inches to be more than enough carbide with many four-stroke riders using the Dooley or Slim Jim products to reduce steering effort. Make sure you stay tuned to next week's episode where I'm gonna talk more in depth about studs and how they affect your sled's complete traction package. And they do a whole lot more than just adding performance, but more importantly, keeping you safe out on the snow. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.